Hi, this is Brian with The Balanced Dog, and today I want to kind of talk a little bit about technology and um, scratching the surface, um, and I'll kind of make that a little bit more clear as I go along. But I've, I've been asked a couple times in messaged and stuff, because I sometimes will wear these glasses with yellow lenses, and I'll, I'll kind of explain those. But some of the things I kind of wanted to touch on first is uh, as far as things that I use, because technology can be a blessing or it can be a curse. And so my kind of drive was to um, not just scratch the surface on how I can use technology to, to benefit myself, um, not only physically, but my, my uh, well-being as well. And so there, there are certain things I'll s I scratch the surface on. Social media, I, I'm not on there probably nearly as much as, as they say you should be. And um, I just don't, I, I get in there and I kind of do my thing and I get out. And so I probably scratch the surface on social media, but that's just, you know, um, kind of not my thing. You know, I kind of get in there like these videos I do, I get in there and post them up and then um, I'll, I'll end up going back on to social media because people have made comments, very nice comments or have questions. So part of that, um, of me going back in to engage those people, that's a, I look at that as a way of that um, I can practice gratitude and go in and thank people for their, their um, awesome comments and answer any questions that they have. But again, I, I kind of go in there once or twice a day and then I, then I come out and uh, just kind of take care of what I need to take care of. And um, so, you know, there's plenty of data out there on what, um, too much time on our phones and social media and stuff um, creates just a lot of stress and anxiety and you know um, so that's probably not a, a good use of technology so on the new iOS update they have a, um, a, a thing in there called screen time and you can actually track and mindset to track everything so it tracks all my time that I spend on like emails messages um, Facebook uh, Instagram and last time I checked, because I can't check now because my phone's recording, but it's about, what, 4.15 now. I checked about an hour ago. I was on Facebook today for nine minutes and, and Instagram for six. So that's kind of how I'm looking at using that technology to kind of show me where I'm spending my time and where I'm spending too much of my time, um, probably where I shouldn't be. And then how do I shift that to time that's being used more productively? Uh, the other thing on my phone and my iPad is um, a feature called Night Shift where you can um, schedule it. Mine comes on at 7. And basically I slide the slider over so my screen's like a, um orange. And basically what that's doing is it's blocking out um, some of the blue light that's being admitted from the phone and from the iPad. And so that takes me to the glasses that I wear. Uh, the yellow ones, um, they're made from a, uh, by a company called True Dark. And the yellow ones are, are good for, um, like when I travel through airports and on the airplane, I wear them all the time because that's all junk light. I usually put them on towards the end of the day and wear them into the night. And then a couple hours before bed, I switch them to these glasses that have a red lens and that blocks all the blue light, any blue spectrum. And that basically it's triggering your body that, you know, it's, it's nighttime. And so your, like your melatonin cycles and things start um, kicking in more naturally and that's kind of how I got my circadian rhythms back on track plus using a, um, the bedtime uh, feature on the iPhone too where you can schedule how many hours you want to sleep when you want to wake up and then it'll it'll um, tell you when you need to go to bed so um, some of the other things I use here here's one called um, from a company called HeartMath and I basically you clip this to your earlobe and then it plugs in your phone and you use the HeartMath app <coughs> and basically, it's a heart rate variability training program. And so the way it works is that it, this take, it tracks your heart rate variability and your pulse, and it gives you all this data in the app after you're done, and it shows you, you know, where you um, were riding through that you know, 10 or 15-minute session. And the, the whole key is, is that you want to stay in the, in the highest level of um, heart rate bell, uh, or coherence is what, what they refer to. So you want to stay in the highest level of coherence. And if you, you, know, you, you focus on your breath and you focus on this positive image and you just breathe and this thing will ping in your, I wear 
uh, earbuds, and then I'll use uh, another app called Brainwave while I'm doing it, which is a binaural um, program, and I'll use like a deep relaxation one while I'm doing the heart math. And so it'll ping if, you're, if your thought goes off track, it'll start pinging down the blue, from green to blue, down to red, which is low coherence, and a lot of people tend to operate in low coherence. And so then it brings your focus back on to your breath into that, into that positive image, and you'll, you'll hear it start to ping back the blue and then ping back the green. So it really kind of keeps you on track, you know, as far as, um, you know, where you are in that moment. And so that's, that's another really good app um, and technology. The, the new one that I'm using now is this company called Huso, and it's basically it's sound technology or sound therapy. And it has these, these pads are like sweatbands, but there's speakers in them. And they go two on your wrists on the inside and then the inside of your ankles. And so they're on these acupressure points. And then you have the device here that everything plugs into as well as the headphones. And there's 10 programs on here. And there's programs for like relaxing, um, calm, uh, pain relief, um, emotional release. And you basically just put the pads on, put the headphones on, select the program, they're 30 minutes long, hit the button, and you just lay down and chill. And it's a really interesting um, development. I listened to the podcast of the guy who developed it, and he basically recorded these Native American sound healers, and then they, they took those recordings and then broke them into different harmonics. But the, the key was is how they um, dealt with that when they put it into the device because you know if you were to record live music and then take it and, and compress it to an mp3 there's a lot of stuff that gets lost in that compression and so this is the part of the technology that they really focused on is that they weren't going to lose any integrity from those human uh, sounds from those those voices of those Native Americans so it's a pretty awesome uh, piece of technology and then some of the meditation apps um, like I said, I use Brainwaves and now Insight Timer. That's kind of the two I use um, the most. And there's other meditation apps out there. Headspace, I started with that. But I think one thing to note that when you're, you know, you're, you're using some of these things or you're trying to shift, you know, and, and shift, you know, maybe a, a habit or you're trying to build like new neural pathways and trying to create more calmness in your life, um, these things do take time and so that's that's something you don't want to just scratch the surface on you know you want to get in there and and really put the time into it and and give it a chance you know give it you know they say 21 days um, it depends on what you're working on it might be longer you know so some of the books that i really like this one i'm reading right now change your brain change your life uh, dr daniel amen really fascinating stuff and he's been around for a while. Um, I have a couple of his hypnosis files, um, but highly recommend that. Uh, this one was, uh, or is another one of my favorites. Um, it's called Start Here. And um, it's a really good, they, they call it um, the life, co life Cross Training, or Life XT, basically. And it's got a really good kind of layout and strategy, you know, on how to, how to better your well-being. And a lot of references to other uh, people that are kind of in the same uh, philosophy, you know, in here. So you can find other books and stuff to read just by reading this one. And so that's um, kind of some of the technology I use. And then obviously I look at my diet. So I really focus on, on, a, on a ketogenic diet and I'm, I'm pretty, pretty dialed into it, you know, because I, I can tell because if I cheat or if I go out and have a, have a meal, that's not really <coughs> kind of in the ratios that I'm normally used to, it doesn't really um, take long for my body to bounce back and get back in. So again, that's something that you just don't jump into. You, you kind of have to move into it. Some people move into it slower, but there, there are some challenging um, parts, you know, that you come across when you're shifting out of that standard American diet or, or high, high carbohydrate, carbo dependent diet. You're kind, you, it takes time to kind of get the body used to not having all that sugar to burn for fuel and um, understanding that um, becoming fat adapted where the keto diet is a fat adapted diet where your body starts burning fat for energy and then that creates ketones through the liver and that's what's being used for energy for the brain so 
much cleaner source of energy, which brings me to dogs because that was my focus as wanting to be a better trainer started looking at nutrition as well and if if it really uh, poor nutrition affects us mentally and physically um, it holds true that poor diets and poor nutrition for dogs especially ones like a lot of these these uh, kibble foods out there are very very high in sugar you know so that brings me to diets and dogs and books on that so Wendy Volhard's book this is her first one um, I would get both of them but um, there's, there's a few changes. I think the uh, vaccine, vaccine sort of information um, in the new one is more up to date than this one. But regardless, it's good to have both of them. And then I would look at the Volhard website and see um, when there's going to be another uh, healthy dog conference, um, healthy dog, dog conference. And um, definitely a must to go uh, to one of those and um, get yourself kind of more honed in on uh, diets and stuff like that couple good uh, series that you can get. This is a really good series, uh, the dog uh, cancer series. Um, a lot of really good uh, vets in here and they do go over a uh, ketogenic diet and stuff for dogs in here. And this, this one kind of came along with it. So um, <coughs> again, really good information. And um, the use of technology, which they go over in a lot of these, um, in these videos, as far as what they've you know, discovered now or what equipment now that allows them to look deeper into, um, you know, diagnosing cancer before it even gets to the stages that, you know, it gets to now where, where it's missed, you know, and also preventative diet, right? So again, those are things you just don't want to scratch the surface on. You want to get in there and do the research and spend the time on them. You know, you won't, you won't know how you're benefiting from something if you just kind of, you know, read, read a book and don't practice what they are actually um, putting in front of you, you know, otherwise you're just kind of wasting your time. So it, it's like when I was doing my meditation stuff, I, I used a bunch of different apps and then I weaned the ones out. And it's the same way I, I work with dogs is that I would learn something new from somebody or I'd see something new. I would try it out. And if I didn't like it, I got rid of it or I might modify it. Right. So the other part of dog training and technology are the e-collars and these have come leaps and bounds but again it still boils down to who's on this end of it right and so it's a fascinating tool it's extremely powerful not from the standpoint it goes up to a hundred but power in the sense that how do you use it from a strategic standpoint and from a standpoint of mostly direction right and so when I look at this as like um, my meditation apps or the, the heart math that gives me, you know, feedback when I'm going off track. If, if I'm training a dog with this, this device, I need to teach them how to respond to it and what that sensation means. Just like the, the ping on the heart math app, I know the green ping is different than the blue, green, uh, the blue ping and the red ping is much different. So I don't need to look at it. I can tell just by the sound of, of, of the pings where I am. Right, so this is physical. So we have to teach the dog first how to respond to this technology. And what I do by, by starting them out on long lines, I'm using just physical pressure to get the dog to create, to create context for the dog what this electronic pressure means, what this new technology means, right? And so when it comes to dealing with like fearful dogs or high flight dogs or reactive dogs, if they're going off track, part, Part of what I look at is I'm building a new neural pathway for that dog. These are things that I work on with myself or other people work on or, or creating a new habit loop for that dog. And I'm using this technology as they used, this used to be a horrible tool back, back when the technology was really new. But now we, we, can just be, we can just use it in finite levels and just finesse the information to the dog. And so... I look at this that if a dog is going off track, if he's going off flight and I give him this information, a tap and, and a verbal command, that's like bringing the dog back on onto the breath and onto the, the um, positive image like you would, you would do in the heart math app. You know, so building those pathways and creating those habit loops don't happen through high punitive measures. It's not to say that corrections aren't a part of the, the, strain, the training protocol or strategy they are. But initially, I want to I use more of the direction 
and that this sensation and this tap means to come back on track, come back and collect with me or come back and walk with me, right? And so that's really the only way you can, you can build these, these habit loops and these, these positive um, new neural pathways for the dog. And then once you have that foundation and you just didn't scratch the surface on that, you actually went deep down and you built that strong foundation, then the corrections can come into play. And it makes much more sense to the dog by that, by that time because you've really built this strong sort of pathway through direction and through this technology that is now the dog's aware of that, oh, I'm going off track. That means I need to either come back to you, collect with you, or just keep moving off of whatever it is I didn't want the dog on to, right? So I hope that makes sense. I was just trying to answer a couple, you know, questions that I kept getting from people. And um, so, you know, hope that helps you and your dogs and, and yourself. And um, thanks for watching. And go out and check out some of those books and um, some of those devices.